final reason why we should get excited about insects and insect ecology in general is that insects are a uh, an, an additional uh, set of reasons why we should get excited about insects in general and insect ecology uh, in particular is that insects play really important roles in our ecosystems and in our uh, food webs. And some of these, um, an additional reason why we should be excited about insects in general and insect ecology in uh, particular is that insects play a diversity of really important roles in our ecosystems. For example, they have an immense amount of biomass. If you go to the tropics, uh, one estimate has it that the biomass of just ants, how many, if you took all the ants and you swept them all up and you put them uh, in, a, in a giant container and you weighed them, their biomass would be four times that of all the vertebrates in the same, uh, in the same area. And if you uh, include all other insects, not just ants, this would be an almost 10 to one ratio. There's an order of magnitude more biomass of insects than there are of vertebrates. And you know, we tend to put a lot of emphasis on, uh, on things uh, with backbones. Uh, so you can imagine that because of all this biomass, that biomass has to be created somehow. Insects are feeding on other things and they have therefore an immense capacity to transform the, uh, the environment. Here's a study that kind of illustrates a little bit of, of this uh, based on some work that, uh, that I, based on some work that we did in uh, Iceland. This is in the, in the subarctic, just below the Arctic Circle uh, at an amazing lake that uh, I'll get a chance to tell you a little bit about later. But this lake is famous for uh, emergences of aquatic insects that have been feeding in the, on the algae and on other um, organisms in the bottom of this lake, other primary producers in the bottom of this lake. And then they come out as giant swarms of uh, uh, during particular times of the year to mate, to reproduce, and so on. And these insects act as food uh, for predators on land, for things like spiders, for things like a harvestmen, decomposers, a lot of their bodies actually die and end up in the soil. Decomposers uh, like uh, mites and columbola will mash up their bodies. Microbes get their little jaws on them and start to break them down. The nutrients are released and they get taken up by plants. And so insects play this incredible role in this particular system here in moving nutrients that used to be in the lake to the terrestrial uh, system and in the process fuel an entire, uh, an entirely different ecosystem that you would have uh, without it. Insects can be incredibly uh, abundant in some areas. Here's just a headline that I did a quick search on uh, having to do with uh, locusts. These are big uh, grasshopper-like uh, things that when the conditions are right in certain parts of the world will actually uh, shift from their solitary phase. Normally grasshoppers just kind of mind their own business feeding on, uh, on plants. But when the conditions are right, they switch to a gregarious phase. There's an entire physiological shift in their bodies and they swarm by the billions uh, across uh, continents uh, even uh, where they wreak havoc on crops, uh, but in the process also move a lot of biomass uh, from, uh, from one area uh, to the next. So this is just something that I have a personal fascination with is places and instances where insects can be so abundant so as to transform um, transform our uh, terrestrial uh, systems. Because of their uh, propensity to eat plants, as I mentioned in the uh, previous uh, video, uh, they have an incredible, uh, incredibly important role to play in our agricultural uh, systems. So here is an example of uh, uh, you know, the estimated potential crop losses before uh, harvest uh, due to various things like weeds, plant diseases, plant pathogens, and insects. And by this estimate here, which is a bit old, uh, 97, uh, insects uh, compete with our food f to the tune of about 13% of, um, uh, of the biomass that we would normally uh, want to harvest. This is a uh, Colorado potato beetle, one of the most devastating uh, herbivores in potato crops. Uh, these are, this is a weevil here that's feeding, I think, on bowls of cotton, uh, for example. Um, 
obviously that 13% average varies a lot. Uh, varies a lot with uh, you know which crops you're talking about and which parts of the world uh, you're talking about, and it has an incredible uh, impact on local communities uh, where you know in places where you have subsist subsistence farming, uh, the loss of even uh, 15 to 20 percent of your crop could be uh, the difference between um, being able to feed your family and not. Uh, so this is a, these are important um, organisms in these environments. Uh, in other places where control mechanisms uh, can be uh, put into place, this is still a costly uh, endeavor for, for farmers that have to apply insecticides or other forms of control because of the farming systems that we've created. Uh, you have outbreaks uh, of insects that are quite costly um, economically, but also costly to human health. Uh, having a lot of pesticides in the environment uh, has, a, um, has a cost for, for human health uh, as well. Uh, interestingly, those, those numbers of you know, 10, 13, 15% uh, insect loss has stayed pretty constant uh, over the years. So despite all these new technologies, uh, bi uh, uh, bioengineered crops and insecticides, uh, we still have a lot of loss of uh, biomass due to, uh, due to insects. Insects also provide a range of uh, things that we refer to as, uh, as services, uh, ecosystem services. Uh, this is a very anthropomorphic uh, way of uh, um, kind of categorizing the, uh, the benefits that uh, nature provides to people. Um, but uh, nevertheless, uh, you know, we've often categorized these. Nevertheless, insects provide a lot of these uh, valuable services for free uh, for people, including the control of pests, like you can see this lady beetle here uh, feeding on, uh, on an aphid, uh, pollination services, the movement of pollen from uh, male to female parts of the plant that causes for some uh, plants uh, successful uh, fruit uh, production, uh, the decomposition of uh, dead material. Uh, here you can see a dung beetle hauling away a dung, uh, deposited by some uh, mammalian herbivore. This is probably uh, an elephant here, but you see the same kind of process happening in uh, pastures uh, and rangelands, in uh, many grasslands in um, uh, temperate areas, North America. Um, and uh, recreation as well. There are lots of reasons, uh, there, there, and recreation uh, as well. Uh, there are many people who get excited about seeing other organisms like birds that uh, feed on insects as one of their primary um, uh, as one of their primary food resources. Um, if you go fishing, um, most aquatic, um, if you go fishing, uh, there are many uh, fish uh, like trout that feed extensively on uh, on aquatic insects, and these are sources of. Uh, of recreation and, and also uh, important for inland fisheries and, and things like that. So we're going to spend some time in the class actually talking about the services uh, that insects play out and how the way that we um, manage our landscapes and the way that we can manage our uh, agricultural and urban systems could affect the ability of organisms to actually play, uh, carry out these uh, these important services. Um, and. Uh, in addition to services, there are also uh, disservices that, uh, that insects uh, play out. I already talked about the, the uh, competition with us for crops. Um, you also see uh, an interaction between um, insects and people through the spread of uh, zoonotic uh, diseases like West Nile virus or, or other viruses that are held here um, in uh, uh, animal hosts as, uh, as their primary host, but that are also transmitted to humans uh, and can cause uh, all kinds of issues, um, disease, and sometimes even mortality for humans. Malaria is a case in point. One of the largest killers of uh, people, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa, is a mosquito-borne uh, mosquito pathogen. So there's lots of reasons to study uh, insect ecology. Uh, besides their diversity and uh, numbers, uh, which uh, give all kinds of, um, uh, there are all kinds of reasons to study uh, insect ecology. And I hope I've convinced you that, uh, that some of these are worthy. Insects are incredibly diverse uh, in uh, both the, the number of types that there are and how abundant uh, they are. And there's a lot to learn uh, about this. 
uh, insect lineages go back a long ways. They have an ancient history uh, on this planet and therefore the evolution of insects and the evolution of other uh, organisms like, uh, like plants um, is this is an amazing place to study these particular uh, role um, interactions. Uh, they play important uh, aspects. They, they play important roles in our food webs, uh, consuming uh, primary production, and as predators, they consume uh, things like pests. Uh, and therefore, they uh, affect the economics of some of our systems, in particular, our, our agricultural systems. Uh, on the same token, they also carry out a series of, uh, on the same, uh, on the opposite side of that coin, coin they also play out on the opposite side of that coin, they also uh, carry out, out a series of really important um, functions that we as humans benefit from, things that we refer to as ecosystem uh, services. And finally, they actually can have direct uh, human health uh, effects uh, through the spread of, uh, of pathogens. And we're gonna touch on all of these uh, different aspects uh, within this class.